watching Hate News Now at 11. Officially, the uh, U.S. government ended its study of UFOs in 1969 because it assured the public there is no proof the phenomenon represents a threat to national security. But what if these unknown aircraft showed an interest in our nuclear weapons? A group of more than 150 military veterans, missile officers, security personnel, including many who worked at the Nevada test site, say they've seen mystery intruders over nuclear facilities. George Knapp of the I-Team is here with this story. George? Uh, of course, we're not going to jump any conclusions who they <laughs> right. are. <laughs> what, what they're up to. Uh, you know, we don't know who is piloting these craft or why they're poking around, but dozens of witnesses and thousands of pages of documents suggest someone is monitoring our nukes. The Department of Energy admits there's a long history of UFO activity over nuclear weapons facilities elsewhere, but zero cases at the former Nevada test site. Now a new film explores some of the most dramatic episodes that include our backyard. In the darkest days of the Cold War, atomic weapons were routinely exploded above ground at the Nevada test site, the most nuked place on Earth. In 1955, 14 A-bombs were detonated as part of Operation Teapot, witnessed by thousands of military personnel in trenches and thousands more test site employees. But there were other observers as well. It was the, uh, what we call the flying saucers. They were pretty prevalent at the test site during those years. At least a dozen former test site employees have told similar stories about unknown aircraft showing up hours or days after an atomic blast. Author and investigator Robert Hastings has spent more than 40 years locating and interviewing military veterans, missile officers, and others who worked in various parts of the atomic weapons program, more than 150 of them so far. They've all told the same story. That, in fact, UFOs have routinely monitored our nuclear weapons going back decades and on occasion apparently have actually interfered with the functionality of those weapons. In addition to the eyewitness accounts, thousands of pages of formerly classified documents have been released to buttress these tales. The I-Team's own FOIA request, filed in 1992, produced a thick stack of documents from the Department of Energy, indicating UFO incidents over every major atomic weapons facility dating to the late 40s, over Los Alamos National Lab, where the bombs were designed, over Hanford, where the plutonium was processed. But DOE has no records of any official sightings over what later became the Nevada test site. Hastings, however, has found plenty. Civilians living near the proving ground often observed the aerial disks, sometimes flying in large formations, and subsequently notified the Air Force. This is a clip from a new documentary film, the culmination of Hastings' years of research. The film includes chilling incidents where UFOs have not only infiltrated restricted airspace over nuclear missile bases, but on occasion have disabled ICBMs and put the military on high alert. In one dramatic incident from the film, military photographers using telescopic lenses watched a UFO disable a warhead used in a missile test fired from Vandenberg. And flying out over the Pacific, suddenly this domed disc, an object with a dome, came in to frame, circled the warhead, which was flying about eight or 10,000 miles an hour, shot four beams of light at it, whereupon the warhead the dummy warhead fell into the Pacific Ocean and the UFO left the facility. UFO incidents at the Nevada test site became so routine, according to a former security officer named Walter Levine, that teams were assigned the job of specifically looking for them at a specially equipped building in Indian Springs Air Base, now known as Creech. Levine told Hastings, He said they were all luminous, they were disc shaped, some of them said, he said, were square shaped. We were to pick up a telephone in this little shack uh, he said there was no dial tone, the voice would just come on. We would read off all these coordinates, uh, the direction of the object, the altitude, etc. And then he said when we wrote this stuff down on a piece of paper, we were then to burn the paper in a trash can in the shack. The government ended atomic weapons tests years ago, but Nevada incidents continue. Former security officers at Area 2 at Nellis Air Force Base, for years a storage facility for up to 200 nuclear warheads, have reported multiple intrusions by unknown aircraft from the late 90s through 2004. Who's behind these incidents and why? Who knows what their motivation is? 
Similar incidents have been reported in the UK, India, Pakistan, and other nuclear powers. In the 90s, the I-Team traveled to Russia twice and obtained classified documents from their Ministry of Defense about startling incidents there. On our website, we posted more information, including a link about how you can see Robert Hastings' new film, UFOs and Nukes, The Secret Link Revealed. And I know there's a lot of people who worked at the test site in our audience, in our audience tonight that probably heard these stories and mm -hmm. give us a call. 150 eyewitnesses. That's it's one thing to hear somebody yeah. tell a story. You see those documents see the from the government. That's it right. comes from their files and it says it's real. It's, it's uh, impressive. Yeah. Thanks, George.